Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1,352. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Excel Magic Trick 1,352, start or the finished file so you can follow along. Click on the link below the video. Hey, we got a great video here. We got to see how to look up three items and return to a single cell. Now, what we're going to try and attempt to do is create a column that has a system code. In our system, we have to join the company name dash, plant zip code dash, and product ID. That code is used by our system. So with the formula, we need to do that. In essence, we're going to look up the product from the product column and return three different things, company, plant, zip code, and ID, and join them all together in a single cell. Now, we're going to see four formula examples. The first one will actually use three VLOOKUPs with exact match. Then our second formula will use a single VLOOKUP with approximate match and an array operation. This formula will require the special keystroke Control shift enter Our third formula will simply use index and match. And index can automatically handle array operations. So it will not require any special keystroke. And finally, we'll look at the lookup function, not VLOOKUP, but lookup using approximate match. Now, we'll do all of these, and we'll have some surprising results. Amongst all of these, some of them will be easier to create. So that will be the advantage for those formulas. And other ones, when we time the calculation time, we'll have faster calculating time. So the actual results will be surprising. Let's just start off with a simple example. I'm going to use VLOOKUP. We have a lookup value. I'm going to be looking up Aspen. That's a relative cell reference. So as I copy down, of course, it moves, comma. Then our table. The first column has product name. VLOOKUP will find a match in that column. And then go over to one of these subsequent columns to try and retrieve an item. Now, I'm only going to go to here because we only need company name from the second column, zip code from the third, and ID from the fourth. Now I need to lock this, so I hit the F4 key, comma. Now the first item is in the 1, 2 column. So company is in 2. So for column index, I put a 2. Now, first column is not sorted. So when I type a comma, I have to use exact match. Now exact match, of course, is safer because we don't have to worry about it being sorted correctly. But if you can sort your table, you always want to use approximate match because it is lightning fast when it comes to calculation time. All right, I'm going to put false for this example or 0. 0 means false, close parentheses. Now I'm going to use the VLOOKUP two other times in this formula. So I'm going to highlight it in edit mode. And instead of using Control-C, I'm going to use Control-CC. I hit C twice. Not only will it copy it, but it opens up the clipboard. Now, if your control CC doesn't work, you have to actually manually go up to home, clipboard, click that, and then turn that option on down here. All right, now I need to join this. So I use the join symbol ampersand, which is shift 7. Then I need a dash. So in double quotes, dash, in double quotes, and then the join symbol, because now I'm going to add my next VLOOKUP. Now watch this. I'm going to copy that little formula element, Control-C. I've loaded up my clipboard. Now I need VLOOKUP two other times, once for the third and once for the fourth column. So I simply come over and click on the clipboard and change the 2 to a 3. Now I click very carefully at the end, click on the clipboard for my ampersand and dash, and now click on the clipboard for my VLOOKUP and change it to 4. Now, this formula is just three VLOOKUPs and two joins. I Control Enter to put the formula in the cell and keep the cell selected. And then I double click and send it down. And there I have created my system code. If I go down a little bit and hit F2 to verify, I see that all of the cell references are working. Now notice a 2, a 3, and a 4. Let's go over to our next example on VLOOKUP array approximate match. Now, I'm going to use approximate match on the next three examples, which means I've sorted this column 
from A to Z. That means I can use approximate match, and any solution will be much faster when it comes to the calculation time. Now I'm going to use VLOOKUP again, click on the product name, comma, and then the table array, same table array, all the way to ID, F4 to lock it, comma. And remember, I want to simultaneously get 2, 3, and 4, so I'm going to use array syntax. Curly bracket opens the array, 2, comma, 3, comma, 4 and curly bracket. What we've done here is called a function argument array operation. Column index number is expecting a single column, but when we give it more than one, in our case three, that instructs VLOOKUP to spit out three answers simultaneously. Now, comma, approximate match is the default, so I do not need to put this argument. I'm simply going to backspace, close parentheses. Now, if I hit Enter, it doesn't work because a cell can't simultaneously hold three items. So I click back here, F2, and let's just evaluate it to prove to ourselves that it's delivering three items. Now, the cursor's at the end, so I simply hit the F9 key. And sure enough, returned in array syntax, company name, plant zip code, and product ID. Now I need to join these three items together. So Control Z. I'm using Excel 2016 Office 365 Insider Edition. So I have the latest functions. And text join is one of the latest functions that Excel offers. It wants to know what the delimiter is. That means what character will separate those three items. In double quotes, I'm going to put a dash, comma. The second argument is, do we want to ignore empty cells or include empty cells? We don't have any empty cells. So I can select whichever one I want. I'm going to use the default true. Either put a true or a one or leave it omitted. I'm going to type a comma to leave it omitted. And there it is. That's the text that will be joined together with a delimiter. Close parentheses. Now when I hit Enter, it only shows me the first item, F2. That's because the VLOOKUP is doing an array operation. Now, the interesting thing about VLOOKUP is that most of the time when we use array constants like this, we don't have to use Control-Shift-Enter. But because the 450 functions that Excel offers were each created at different times in history, each function does a different thing. And this formula is just flat out going to require the keystroke Control, Shift, and Enter to get Excel to recognize it as an array formula and calculate correctly. Now, I use Control, Shift, Enter, but you have to look up into the formula bar and verify that those curly brackets are put in. Excel puts those in automatically, letting you know that it understood that it was an array formula. Now I can come over and double click and send it down. Go to some particular cell, hit F2, and verify that all of the cell references are working. Now, be careful when you F2 down here. If I hit Enter, because I didn't use Control-Shift-Enter, it didn't calculate correctly. So F2 and enter it with Control-Shift-Enter. Now let me do that again. If you hit F2 to verify, instead of hitting Enter or Control-Shift-Enter, we can use the Escape key. Escape reverts back to whatever the formula was before you put it in edit mode. All right, that's our second formula. Let's go look at our third option on the index approximate sheet. Now, in this example, we have a sorted first column. So we can use approximate match, which is faster when it comes to calculation time. Let me close the clipboard over here. And guess what? We're going to use the index function. Now, the index function is one of five functions that has an argument, and in our case, the array argument, that can handle array operations without using Control-Shift-Enter. The complete list is sum, product, lookup, index, aggregate, and chi-square test. And what we're going to do is we're actually in the array argument. Since we need, as a result, to join company, plant zip code, and ID, I'm just going to join all three lookup columns right in the array. So watch this. I'm going to highlight the company column, F4 to lock it, and then I need my delimiter. So ampersand, double quote dash, and double quote ampersand. 
I should have kept the clipboard open. I'm going to copy that. Then I need to join it to plant zip code, F4, Control-V, and then the ID column, F4 to lock it. Now, if I highlight the array argument, we can clearly see the operation that we're doing is join. And because it's not a single item on either side, but an array of items, this is an array operation. When I hit F9 to evaluate this, you could see it creates an array that represents a single column. That joined item there with three items is now a single item in this array. That semicolon means go down a row. So this is a column with joined item, joined item, joined item. That's exactly what we want. These are the items we potentially want to retrieve and bring back to the cell. Control Z. Now we just need to come to the second argument, comma. And row number means relative position. So if I'm looking up Aspen, I need relative position 1. If I'm looking up Sunbell, I need relative position 6. So what do we do when we need relative position for our row number? We use the match function. We're going to have our lookup value of product, comma. Lookup array, that's the first column here, and I need to lock it with the F4 key. Now, these items are sorted just like we did when we used VLOOKUP. So the match type, we can leave it out because the default is approximate match, close parentheses. Now, match. All it does is it looks up that item and tells us the relative position of the item in the list. One, two, three, four, and so on. So that formula will work. Close parentheses. We do not have to use Control-Shift-Enter because that's one of the few magic arguments that allows us to hit Enter. Or in my case, I'm going to use Control-Enter because I want to put the thing in the cell and keep the cell selected so I can copy. Just to check it out, look up at the formula bar. There's no curly brackets. And it calculated that array operation perfectly. Now I can double click and send it down. Go down to some particular cell, F2. That is looking beautiful. Escape. Now let's go look at our fourth example, three lookup functions. Now we could do three V lookups and then put all of our arguments and then leave this last argument out so that we could do approximate match. And it actually would calculate faster than our first example where we used exact match. But because we're doing approximate match and our table has a first column is sorted, I'm switching over to the much easier lookup function. Now, actually, the lookup function historically came before VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP. And it has two different options. The one we're going to use is simply a lookup value and then the table. Here's our lookup value, comma. And watch this. The way this argument works, table, notice there's no comma which column number. If I want to get company name and there are the same number of rows or more rows than there are columns, lookup knows to get the item from the last column. So I can simply hit F4 to lock it, and that's it. It's the same as using VLOOKUP with a column number 2. But when I close parentheses, and just to see that this works, if I, I should have controlled Enter, I hit Enter. If I copy this down a few, I can see, sure enough, Sunbell, it got the gel booms. Eagle, it got the Colorado booms. So it's equivalent to using VLOOKUP for approximate match. But I like it because I don't have to enter as many arguments. Now I'm going to Control V because I need to join this. And watch this. Lookup. There's my lookup value comma. I'm using the array. So now if I want postal code, I just highlight all the way to the last column. F4, close parentheses, Control V, lookup, L-O-O, -O, tab. There's my product to look up, comma, the array. I go all the way to the ID, F4, close parentheses. Now, again, we can use VLOOKUP or LOOKUP when we're doing approximate match in this situation. Control, Enter, double click and send it down. Whoops, I already had stuff there. The algorithm for double click always goes as far down as there's stuff. 
Now, since there's no stuff here, when I double click, it'll look to the left or the right. Since there's stuff to the left, it'll go all the way down. I'm going to use Control down arrow to go down to the bottom, F2. And sure enough, it looks like it's working fine. Escape, Control Home. All right, we saw four examples. Now, I've already timed these. And if you want, there's some VBA code I got from Charles William. And there's the time button on each sheet. You simply would highlight the range and then click the time button. You'd highlight the entire column. But here's the results. The fastest formula was the approximate match typing out three lookup functions. Now, we could have used VLOOKUP with approximate match, and we would have gotten that as the fastest one. The second fastest was three VLOOKUPs doing exact match. So although these two formulas may have taken longer to create and they're longer formulas, they're much faster calculating than the two array formulas. Now let's look at the timing. I timed each one three times and then calculated the average. So that was the fastest time, three approximate match. Then the next fastest was three VLOOKUPs doing exact match, but it was 17% longer calculating time than approximate. And then look at this. Our index, which had a join array operation on three columns, anytime you have an array operation, in general, it takes a lot longer to calculate. That was like 130% longer in its calculating time than the fastest approximate match. And look at this. Here was our VLOOKUP with our function argument array operation. That one took 500% longer. So the moral of the story is, Approx and this is true for all lookup situations, not just when we're joining. Approximate match is going to be the fastest. Then exact match and array formulas are going to take longer. Now notice these times still look pretty fast for a small project that you're creating in Excel. You know, you're not going to perceive any difference in calculating time. Ah, but when you start creating formulas like these across multiple sheets, and your model is big, the ranges are huge, then this type of analysis of which formula is not necessarily the easiest to calculate, but which one is the fastest calculating really matters. Now, I actually wrote a whole book called Control-Shift-Enter Mastering Excel Array Formulas, where I teach from beginning to end about array formulas and do a lot of timing. All right. That was a lot of fun. We saw three V lookups with exact match. We saw a V lookup with a function argument array operation. We saw index, which didn't require that special keystroke, doing an array operation across three columns. And finally, we saw three lookup functions doing approximate match. All right, we'll see you next video.